Well, it was exciting for me to see Ben get an opportunity that was such a big opportunity versus Phoenix um, in relationship to Cody sustaining an injury. The great thing about Ben is this. His first time with us, uh, with me personally, was with the Charlotte Independence. He was on trial. He was on trial for an entire month at the Charlotte Independence. At the end of that trial, we told him we might need to see another couple goalkeepers. We'll be in touch. A month goes by, and then Ben, you know, we call Ben again. He comes back into Charlotte and still has another couple weeks to prove his point. He ends up finally signing for the Charlotte Independence at that stage. And I say all of that because from that point on, I continue to grow and respect the amount that Ben puts in every single day towards training and just trying to hone his craft and be the best goalkeeper he can possibly be. Um, then fast forward to I signed Cody Mizell as, as you know our first goalkeeper. I knew right away I wanted to sign Ben Bury because I knew that he was capable not only of, of being a great number two but also competing for that number one spot. And again, he has to you know sit behind a, a goalkeeper this year that's arguably, arguably one of the best goalkeepers in the league. I knew his chance would come at some stage, and I think he took full advantage of that. So it's just a full circle moment for where Ben and I started in Charlotte to see where he is now in front of 13,000 performing for New Mexico United as, as the number one on the night. Hey, New Mexico United Nation, it's been a while since we got to sit down with head coach and technical director Troy Lesane, and we're going to correct that right now. Coach, thanks for taking time to, to sit down with us. The majority of our conversation is going to be about the future and, you know, the rest of the season and the season in general. But before we jump into that, let's talk a little bit about the last result with Phoenix. You know, it was Ben's debut, great atmosphere. Just, just share a few words with us on that. Yeah, first, the atmosphere. You know, I, I've said so many times about our fans, the best fans in the league. And really and truly, it was the most electric atmosphere that I've ever been a part of as a player, as a coach in the USL. And, you know, for the result to end the way it did, certainly we wanted to deliver a little bit more on our end than what it was. But I think what the, the fans can walk away with is they saw the level of commitment from our, our guys on the field, the level of focus and intensity that we brought. And if we continue to do that, and if the fans continue to bring the energy they brought, I feel confident that we can make a, a real run at the playoffs. What has the messaging been uh, to the team, to the other coaches going into these final four games of the regular season? Yeah, just to, to remain focused, take it one game at a time, your, your typical cliched phrases, because I, I do think in the final four matches here, it can get lost upon us that if we look at all four of the games, then we, you know we might lose a little bit of focus on what RGV has to bring to the table, and they're an excellent team. Uh, they're a team that you know has won two games against talented opponents in Real Monarchs and Orange County. Um, so that's that's really been a lot of the messaging is to continue to have that same level of commitment, intensity, and focus that we had against Phoenix but put all of that same energy towards uh, RGV this weekend. How have uh, RGV's recent results kind of dictated or influenced what you're doing with the training session? Yeah, we always look at the opponent and see where they have success and we try to eliminate that uh, based on our preparation. And then we also look for maybe some areas that the way, based on the way we play, how we can exploit some areas where they may be weaker. And so we're, we're definitely dialing into some of the video and, and what they've done the last two weeks. Um, in relationship to how we'll prepare this weekend. Uh, Devin Sandoval, been on an absolute tear as of late, six goals in four matches. What do you attribute to that, to that uptick? I, I contribute that uh, Devin Sandoval has the entire season put himself in a position to score goals. Um, I think that his, what he does beyond just putting himself in goal scoring positions sometimes goes unnoticed. And sometimes I think that takes away from him being able to have that last clinical touch um, because he puts in so much for the group, uh, both on the offensive side and the defensive side. So to see him be rewarded over these last you know, four matches with six goals, he deserves that. And, and I think uh, you know, he's, he's an individual that he doesn't want a lot of praise, he doesn't want the limelight, 
but he deserves it based on the way he's playing and the way that he's been clinical in these moments. And, um, and I hope that continues for him throughout the rest of the season. Uh, Sam picked up a, an injury towards the middle of the season, and since returning from that, he's moved up into the midfield and, and really looked like a great fit there. Um, what sort of went into the decision to, to move him up? Well, naturally, he's a center midfielder, so he's played kind of in that 6-8 role virtually all his life. And there's attributes to his game that I thought would transfer well to the center back position, which it did. You know, he, he played in some really, really important matches for us in the beginning of the year in our Open Cup run at center back, and we got a lot out of it um, uh, from him in that position. But at the same time, Justin and Rashid have just formed a great partnership. I think Rashid's done so well in his rookie season. So it allowed us to look for uh, Sam to maybe move into the midfield and, and provide a little bit more physicality. Um, and, and also just his, his overall, he's, he's a pretty cerebral player. I think he sees everything that's going on in the game and he can make the right adjustments. Uh, and I think you've seen that impact over the last three, four matches that he's played there. Great results first OKC in Colorado Springs. Reno, actually, I thought he was great, even though we didn't pull out that result. And then the other night versus Phoenix, I thought he was arguably one of the best players on the field. Yeah, the star of the match uh, voting uh, reflected that. As there well. you go. The fans loved it. <laughs> uh, so it's a first year, and I'm sure in a first year you you learn a ton, whether that's in terms of you know leading the coaching staff, managing the team. Heck, even the state of New Mexico, you've probably learned a lot about. What are some of those top lessons that come to mind? Well about the first the last bit of your question you know the state of New Mexico I feel I feel like I've been here for you know 10 12 years because of the way that the community has embraced embraced you know me and my wife and then certainly the team and everything that we work very hard for here for New Mexico United and that just speaks volumes to the type of people that are here I mean it's just a committed um, loyal group of, of uh, people that that really and truly have your back at all times and that means the world to me um, so, and I've just learned more about the state and how passionate the state is. Um, but beyond that, as a coach, what I've learned is I, I think I've made a number of mistakes. What we've tried to do as a staff and what I've tried to do personally is just not make those same mistakes twice. And I think we've been, we've been pretty good about that um, for the most part this year. Still have a long way to go, still learning a lot um, as, as, an, as a head coach. And, um, you know, I think there's, there's certainly room to improve these last four games and we're going to we're going to measure up to the, the way we need to improve and hopefully make a run here at the playoffs. So loosely related question is kind of in that same vein. But again, this has been a memory field field year and it's, it's kind of an impossible question to answer, but I'll ask it anyway. What are some of those memories that stick out the most since, <sighs> since you joined us about a year ago this time? Yeah. First memory that stands out is the black and yellow bash, which was um, what November of 2018. So that that's the first memory that sticks out. And I'll give you a couple more, but Whenever we showed up to that, the way the, the anticipation built for that event, it sold out within minutes. You know, there's 500 people there, and just the energy that was in that room, you could really feel that everybody was waiting for this, right? And then the next moment is, I'll never forget, the week leading up to Fresno, hearing Peter every single day say, we're 6,000, we're 7,000, we're 8,000, 9,000, you know, the numbers kept going up. so you recognize that, again, the importance of what this club was going to mean to the community was right there in the beginning, both Black and Yellow Bash, first game of the season. And then seeing Devin Sandoval score the first goal. I mean, really and truly, there's, there's nothing more poetic than the first player that is a New Mexican, born and bred, scoring our first goal. Th these are some of the moments that stand out first and foremost for me with New Mexico United. So it's, it's not really your job as a, as a coach to talk about the things you're, you're confident in, right? That most of the time it's, it's what do you need to improve, what needs to be fixed, what, what areas need to be addressed. But I, I want to flip that script and I want to hear from you. What are you confident in when it comes to this squad? I'm, I'm confident that every time out you're going to see us measure up to what our ethos is, and that's hard work, humility, and diligence. Every single time that our team steps on the field, I feel like our fan base will represent New Mexico in the right way, and it'll, it'll be a, a strong reflection of the values that we believe in and that the state believes in, and that's something that I'm always confident in. And if we do that, then I feel like we can be in any game, we can beat any opponent, and that's where we have to get it right first and foremost. Coach, thanks as always for taking some time out of your busy schedule. Thank Good you, buddy. this weekend, and uh, go get them. Always a pleasure.